Oh yes, come on baby! Come on! Come on, Brighton have just beat Everton away 4-1. Absolutely amazing, what a performance. We've got amazing Evan Ferguson, Karu Mitoma, Solly Marge, and Pascal Gross. <gasps> it's brilliant! I'm so humble, don't play around. This is your time, don't mess around, boy. <laughs> Me telling you who I think should be in each position. Now look, I know, I bet many of you were hoping for a match day vlog of this amazing match, but this was the only game I couldn't go to uh, in this time. I know, it's so annoying, it's so annoying. But that is why I'm here to make a video to talk about the match, because I did watch the match on TV, and oh my god, I'm so impressed. You know what, I hardly ever watch Brighton on the TV, so it is so amazing to watch on a... On, on a view upwards, seeing how they play, seeing how they move around. It's just like Barcelona. It's incredible football. Brighton, Di Zerbi. We should be calling him Roberto Di Zerbi. We should be calling him Roberto Di God. He is an absolute god. And before the match as well, I was a little bit optimistic because we had a bit of a different lineup going forward. So we had Sanchez in goal. We had Duncan Colwell working as a partnership together at uh, both centre-back positions. Then we had Veltman on the right. Then we had Estepenian on the left. Uh, then we had Moises Casado, Jeremy Samianto and Gross. Uh, and then, going forward, we have Evan Ferguson, Karu Mitoma on the left, and Solly March on the right. Like, having Evan Ferguson on his own up front, I just thought... Are we... Is this too much pressure for this kid? He's 18 years of age. He's Irish. Is it, is it too much? But do you know what? The game started and he was class from the start to the end. Evan Ferguson is an absolute legend. And I, I personally think that he should be staying up front in that striker role for the next couple of games. Just to see if he could keep this amazing streak up. Because he's just played Arsenal. He scored against Arsenal when we were losing. He has had the composure to score there against a big team like them, top of the table. Just gone to Goodison Park, goes and scores again. It, it, it's, it's an actual joke. It's an actual joke. Give this kid more game time. He needs it. I don't know about you guys, but Karuma Toma at the moment is next level. He, he's, he's positioning, his pace, he's dribbling. He's so good, but he's so composed as well. Like He comes forward, he comes dribbling in like... Let's just talk about the very first goal in this game today. Moises Casado gets the ball, and I don't know what type of vision he has, but he saw Matoma on the left, and Matoma was free, completely free. He does a beauty of a ball. Literally one of the best balls I've seen, like, all season. Moises Casado, absolute world class. So go straight into the feet of Matoma, and he, as soon as he gets the ball, he's in that box, he's bursted through, he's, he's not even looking at who's around him, no, I'm getting in that box, I'm having this opportunity for myself, and it's exactly what he does, gets inside the box, takes the defenders the wrong way, he's like, he takes his time of shooting as well, he gets in the box, he's like, oh, am I going to shoot? No, nope, I'm going to go again, oh, am I going to shoot? He does shoot, goes straight for the legs of Tarkovsky, absolutely beautiful, and that gets us off on an amazing start. I literally... The, 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 the worst thing in the world for the Arsenal game, and I think that's what killed us in that game as well, is them getting that early goal with Saka. Roberto De Zerbi said, we need to get an early goal in the Everton game, and it's exactly what we did. Matoma bangs it in, back of the net, see you later. We then start the masterclass. Half time comes along, and I'm just feeling good at this point. We're going into the second half, I'm feeling, okay, look. Everton are not playing too bad. They didn't play too bad at the start. They gave us some threatening opportunities. Sanchez had to make a really good save at one point as well. And I'm thinking, okay, look, if we score one more, I'm going to feel really, really comfortable then. I think we just need to get one more. And I was positive we were we were going to like hold it on for the rest of the game. Because uh, honestly, we were playing so well at this point. Then the 51st minute, Jeremy Samiento comes in. He almost fakes the uh, the cross at the start. So he almost goes, oh, I'm going to cross. No, I don't. And he carries on until he gets right to the back line where it's just about to go out for a goal kick. Crosses it in. And there is Evan Ferguson to smash it top beams. Like, I know it's kind of a tap-in for men. You must be scoring. But... 
He hits it top bins where a goalkeeper just just will not get it. He powers it into the top left-hand side corner. And that was it. That was it. I was going mental. It was crazy. Evan Ferguson, he needs to start. He absolutely needs to start. In Middlesbrough, we've got Middlesbrough next Saturday. I'm going to be going to that match, so be ready for the vlog. I'm going to be heading up there, right up north, to the Middlesbrough game for the FA Cup match. I think we should play him again there because I think if he can score again in Middlesbrough and we win that game again, then I feel like Evan Ferguson should be starting for the next ongoing matches. Because I, honestly, that's two games against two very good sides, especially if Everton have just literally drawn against Man City. He, he's performed in both of those uh, hard scenarios and situations. Let's put him up against Middlesbrough, see if he can score even more goals. So it's pretty crazy because the last two goals, they all come together. So obviously the second goal that we scored with Ferguson came at the 51st minute. Then the third goal comes at the 54th. Then the fourth goal comes at the, the 57th. So it's pretty nuts. So the third goal came around. It was Solly March who scored it. When he scored it, I knew that was it. Three goals, it's done. It is all that. And as soon as Solly March was on the ball and he was cutting in and he was fake, like he was looking to shoot, he was looking to shoot and then kept diving round. He takes a shot with his left foot and it goes bottom left-hand side corner. He finds the gap. He powers it there and it goes back of the net. Free kneel. It's all that. Okay then, going on to the fourth goal. Now I know this was a massive mistake for the defence side for Everton. I can't remember what defender did it. He tried to do a pass back to John Pickford and it had no pace on it. Literally no pace on it. There was Pascal Gross running it as quick as he possibly can. I know he has no pace, but he got there and it was literally from then. I was watching him, he was running and it was one on one with John Pickford and he just chips it beautifully over the top of him. The amount of composure that guy has is ridiculous. Go celebrate. And of course, composure and celebration as well. You never see Gross going nuts over a celebration. He's composed, professional, all day, every day. Okay then, now we're going on to the negative side of the game. And now, this is the penalty goal from Damari Gray that got Everton that one goal that really wasn't needed. Robert Sanchez. Now, I hate to say it, ladies and gents, but Robert Sanchez has had so many faults uh, in the last couple of games. It, it's, it's not even a joke. Like, in Arsenal, he's fumbled a few saves where he could have saved it. His positioning's been really poor. And here, again, is, is another fault that he's done. Just him being careless, reckless, and... His positioning's just poor. Like, it, it really is sometimes. Like, he puts himself in dangerous uh, positions. Sometimes he, he calf comes out and then doesn't know what to do. So, he, he, at times, he's very frustrating. Very frustrating. And here we have two minutes left of extra time. We're in the 90th minute. There's two minutes left. Extra time added on. And Awobi comes forward. Uh, the fence can't really handle him quite well. And then out comes Sanchez. Goes straight in with the challenge. And, yeah, there we go. Penalty. All day, every day. There's no arguing against it. It's definitely a penalty. Um, now, look. I would rather he didn't go in for the tackle and let um, Iwobi go past him. Because it would have been a very tight angle even if he did get past him and took the shot. Because, yes, he's most likely going to score it. But there's always that chance where he's going to fumble it. But, anyway, it didn't happen. Sanchez went in for the tackle. It was a silly challenge. Really didn't need it. And uh, they got the penalty. Demario Gray struck it. And actually, Sanchez went the right way. But it almost went through him. Like, I still... Yeah, okay, fair enough. It's a penalty. He hit it hard, uh, Demario Gray. He went the right way and it just went through him. It was a little bit frustrating as well. But anyways, without being too negative in this game, because there shouldn't be any negatives. It was a fantastic game. Roberto De Zerbi, you can take a bow, my son, because you have been incredible. And it's one thing I love about Roberto De Zerbi, is he gives these young players an opportunity. And look, he, we, we may have just found a, a hidden gem in Evan Ferguson, man. It, like, honestly, it's crazy. So that puts Brighton back up to eighth now. Uh, one point behind Fulham and one point behind Liverpool, who are in seventh and sixth position with just two points 
behind Tottenham, who are in fifth position, and that's Europa League. I know I couldn't give you a match day vlog for the Everton game, but I will be heading to Middlesbrough for the FA Cup match for you. I'm going to be travelling for you because I know I missed out Everton and I feel bad for it. So we're going to go up to Middlesbrough. We're going to be in a hotel there staying overnight as well. And we'll get you a vlog for that FA Cup matchup. So anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed my reactions to the 4-1 win against Everton away in Goodison Park. Here's my reactions because I couldn't give you a vlog on it. Everton fans, if you're watching this as well, I appreciate you guys. I don't have anything against you. We're just going crazy for Brighton right now because it's looking so positive for our club. And you never know where we could end up at the end of the season. But respect to you Everton fans out there watching this if you are watching it as well. So then, guys, if you are new and you want to see more of my content, then please subscribe for free. Turn that bell notifications on and like this video if you have enjoyed. Can we get 100 likes on this video? It would absolutely be amazing. But anyway, boys and girls, it's been your boy, Luke Links Brighton, and I'll see you, Brighton Fanatics, in the next one. Peace. Thank you.